what came of the idea to get some member of the British Parliament? I think there was one member who was calling for for the government to change their approach to Julian and uh, disavow the phony charges uh, with respect to jumping bail. Uh, and of course, the Swedish uh, part of that equation is, has changed and has gone away. And so is there anything come of trying to get uh, members of parliament, Corbyn would be a natural, if he made one speech on the subject, it would, it would enlarge this as a, as a major problem in Britain. So anything come of that suggestion, Joe? Well, we've got two campaigns now we're talking about. That was the first one. And I was hoping that the Ray McGovern of uh, VIPS, Veterans Intelligence Professionals for Sanity, would draft such a memo and send it to uh, Jeremy Corbyn I think uh, here that group is dismissed by the establishment, very much so. But I think in the UK, I'm just guessing that if Corbyn's office sees these lists of people who worked at the National Security Agency, at the Central Intelligence Agency, at the FBI, at very high levels, people with decades and centuries maybe of experience together, when we add you in, Mike, because uh, you're also a member of VIPs, that they might be impressed by that. But it is definitely worth an effort to do that. And the second campaign is the one we've just talked about tonight of getting a letter to the High Commissioner in London. And that would extend to any Australian citizen listening to try to send letters to the High Commissioner as well, to put some pressure on. If the letters come in, the emails come in, phone calls come in, he may have to feel like he has to respond, uh, even if he's not inclined to do anything to help Julian. At least he knows that people out there are, are aware of his inaction and calling for him to reverse that. Jeremy Corbyn, should have the motivation to stand by Julian Assange because both, both of them are victims of the coordinated smear of the integrity initiative. Um, right. Well, somebody needs to draft a letter. I, I, I thought that uh, Ray McGovern hopefully would do it. Uh, so Ray's in the middle of a move to North Carolina uh, as we're speaking right now, after more than 30, after more than 50 years living in Washington in the same eight bedroom a house in Arlington, Virginia, he's actually moved to be close to the grandchildren. So he's, Mike's, he's been out of action. But once he's all set up again, I'm going to impress him on that. Plus okay. the other VIPs members, I think that that, need, that should be done. It's their call. I don't have anything, anything to say about what they do, but I could suggest that they do that. Yeah. And the letter wouldn't be difficult. It, it's just a question of addressing him honorably and pointing out the fact that the uh, that Julian Assange is a journalist, and 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 protecting the the rights of journalists is extremely important for a democracy to thrive. So something like that, uh, and then if I don't know, I don't have any contacts in London uh, that I could use to hand deliver it. But but I think that Ray, uh, the governor who heads up uh, our organizations would be the uh, person to get the letter off. And, uh, and, and he could include all of our names uh, in support of the letter. So I, I think that would be an excellent idea. We could ask Dan Ellsberg to sign on as well. Oh, I'm sure uh, so I was living particularly uh, when you were talking now about Jeremy Corbyn. And I mean, I, I, I've always thought that really the key to Julian's freedom uh, is Jeremy Corbyn because you know it, this is the most likely way that uh, Julian can escape from the, the prison that he's in at the moment I mean, is if Corbyn becomes prime minister and and just says that enough of this nonsense this this farce has gone on long enough or this punishment has um, gone on long enough and he'll just bring it to an end uh, he'll pack him off on a plane and that's it. You know, you send him straight to Australia. And, and uh, Corbyn Simon, has... Simon would, you, Simon, would you write a letter to Corbyn? Would yeah, you write a letter? Yes. Please I, do. I, I'd be happy to. And, and, and of course, you must remember that his chief advisor is Seamus Milne, who was an editor at The Guardian. And he's certainly very sympathetic to, um, uh, to Julian. Um, so I think that's 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 really the key. The one thing that concerns me is whether Corbyn really would have the political courage uh, were he to become prime minister just to say, 
enough of this, put him on a plane to Australia and, and it's all over. Because you know, the man's being smeared day and night. I mean, it's, it's, it's just as outrageous what goes on in London now. He's smeared, one day he's smeared as an anti-Semite and a Nazi. Next day he's smeared as a, uh, a card-carrying communist. Another day he's smeared as a kind of a, a lapdog of Putin's. I mean, this is the entire media is uh, running this campaign. So it would require some real courage and determination on his part uh, to um, to step in and say, you know, you know, because he Corbyn knows exactly what's going on. I mean, you know, he's under no illusion. He knows he knows that this is completely bogus. This hold the charges against uh, Julian. Uh, it's really a question of whether would he have the political strength to um, persevere on this course. At the moment, he's leader of the opposition, and you know, Theresa May is not going to listen to anything he says. George, that's not the purpose of the exercise. Uh, I wouldn't waste any time with Theresa May since she's got her hands full with Brexit. But but Corbyn, uh, this this is this would not take a lot of courage. Uh, he just would make a statement that uh, it's unjust uh, and criticize the the uh, British position, which politically would be very good, very and help him in his candidacy to become the prime minister. And so I think you should write a letter to him and get any other friends of Julian to write a letter to him. Uh, having been an elected official, I got to tell you, letters have an impact. Even if they get the staff, if the staff is turned on by the subject, like what you're talking about, his chief of staff is sympathetic, then the, the chief of staff will weigh in. And all of these things have an effect on them. We're all human regardless of what level of society we're at. And, and when people just keep gnawing at you to do something, it has effect. And so I think that getting a letter off to him and getting a couple of your friends who share your views on Assange to get a letter off to him and say, look, at we're not asking a lot. We're just asking that in one of your speeches, you just make a statement that this is a ridiculous position for the, for the British government to take. And it erodes, it erodes freedom, and, and we're and we're for freedom. So if you would do that's that, a, that's, a, that's a good I, idea. That that is actually a good idea. You know, that um, to get a letter to him, and you know, he, exactly, he could just make a statement in Parliament. I mean, and that would have a yeah. that would have a big. It would, he one paragraph. He could he could do it in in Parliament, and and that'd be the end of it. And it won't hurt his career. It'll help his career. Okay. Right. That's so, interesting yeah. you say that. When the, the political uh, calculation he's making is whether that would help him electorally or not. He could also ask her, the prime minister, during question time. Wouldn't that be a spectacle? That's right. If he that's asked exactly her about free Julian Assange. Yeah, that's exactly when he should do it, because that's his job to ask uh, difficult questions during the course of the Q&A. So... <laughs>